Just keep on doing what you were taught to do. And everything will fall into place. Call Halayim Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Havakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles, elders, bishops of great millstone, rule well over the flock of Israel. Shalom and salutations to the Akim out here who are pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect Akim Akwa, scattered Israelites and Israelite foreigners. I brought this out. This video is edifying. I'm Rapa Ma. Ephesians 3 and 7 on down talks about our ministry um talks about our calling everything that we hold near and dear in these last days um all of the elect were brought together under this banner of uh this truth which edifies us which strengthens us um it's all um, founded upon by how by shimmy awashai that's our rest and it brings us comfort this wisdom knowledge and understanding that we have um Helps us make sense of our tribulations, our troubles, but also the times and the things in which are to come, which we always speak about future prophecy here at Great Millstone. So it's a big deal for our ministry. So just going into a little bit, reflecting on Yahweh Shah and, um, you know, what he was faced with, but also what power he had. And he had to resist using that power. That was some of his temptations. Um that he could have easily got out of the situation he was in, but if not for his steadfastness to do the will of his father. Um, and that would lead to the example in which we have today of Yahweh Shah, which is somebody unto death who stood fast for the will of, his, of the father. And if we could just hold th true to that teaching and that understanding, then no matter what happens, um, we're serving out the purpose of the Lord, so he's going to bless us for it. Then we'll be rewarded and glorified at the coming of Yahweh Shah. So it's all an investment. It's all seeing value. We see value in um, what this truth is and what it means to us. We see value in it because in the long run, it'll pay off. The reward comes later. So Ephesians 3 and 7, without further ado. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of Yahweh given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, whom, who am blessed in the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Yahweh Shah. And LT says, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Yahweh Shah. And that's our duty. That's another one of our obligations. See, we can't keep this close-lipped, tight, you know, lipped about the coming of the Lord and the things that we got to endure in order to be um, delivered. We can't be tight-lipped about, you know, Yahweh Shah and his role uh, that he played and still plays amongst the elect, amongst future prophecy. No, we have to continually um, talk about these treasures and tell these treasures right and share these treasures you right um it will be seen on corners um the message will be spread throughout the earth and then the word then the end shall come it's like it. it says in to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in yahweh who created all things by yahweh Shah. right look at the nlt i was chosen to explain everyone this mysterious plan uh plan that yahweh the creator of all things had kept secret from the beginning so this is that this is that job and that obligation that duty that we've been tasked with to share this gospel this good word this good news and for those who receive it you'll be blessed those who believe and make this your foundation you'll be blessed you'll be stable all right a foundation has everything to do with stability and in troubled times right which we plan ahead right which perceive the evil You'll be secure. You'll be um, amongst those who have that thawad, exempt from judgment that the Lord has given to his elect. It says, to the intent that now unto the principal principalities and powers in heavenly places uh, might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of Yahweh, according to the eternal purpose that what? That eternal purpose which he proposed in Yahweh Shah, our Lord. So this is an eternal purpose. This is an eternal plan. You know how you make plans for the summer? Or you had plans 2020 or 20, you know, I don't know, 2000. 
2010 plans, five year plans. What this is an eternal plan. You've never heard a plan like this plan because it's eternal. OK. And the eternal plan of the Heavenly Father is that he's going to share the glory of the kingdom of heaven uh, um, that he's given unto Yahweh with his saints. All right. And so for that, we seek out Yahweh Shah and we learn from Yahweh Shah. He's our perfect example. And he's also the propitiation of our, our sins. He is that atonement, that perfect atonement that brings us back, the covenant people back with the Father. This is Matthew 25 or 26 and 42. <clears throat> he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. What does that mean? And LT says, My Father, if this cup cannot be taken away from Unless I'll drink it, your will be done. So the, the Yahweh Shah is making it very clear that he's asking of his father to take away that cup, except the only reason he wouldn't, he's that this cup shouldn't be passed away from his lips is if it's the Lord's will, if it's his father's will. Because Yahweh Shah sought to please only one, and that is the father. He wasn't self serving. There goes his will right there. There goes his desire right there for the cup to be taken away from him. And that cup is figurative of that um, crucifixion that he would have to endure, that death. However, he asked that the Lord's will still be done. So ultimately, you surrender, just like Yahweh Shah surrendered. You surrender your own will to the will of the Father. And that's the true definition of being selfless in this truth. Right now, John 10 and 17, therefore, doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. So Yahweh wasn't this defenseless uh, um, man as if to say that, you know, he can't do anything about this. The Romans are coming. There's nothing that he could do. He can't stand up against them. No, rather, we understand that Yahweh Shah. Uh, could have done many things to escape that judgment right as he said himself no man take it there from me but i lay it down to myself so he could have right prevented that situation from happening except he did what his father asked him to do just like isaac laid down uh for for abraham when asked to do it that's why we know our is also isaac he says i have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. What's that saying in the NLT? For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and also take it up again. For this is what my father has commanded. So you can see now, it's not because he was just completely weak or he had no say so in the matter. The Romans are just too, too, too masterful, too, too strong and. Uh, you know, he's a weakling. Nah, that wasn't the situation. Yahweh Shah said, no man can take it from me, but he laid it down of himself. And that selflessness, all right? Ultimately, Yahweh Shah stuck to the Father's eternal purpose. All right? Matthew 26 and 52 says, Then said Yahweh Shah unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently or presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? So again, Yahweh Shah laid down his life. Why? Because he could have easily prayed to the Lord that this cup be taken from him and made that request. Right. And then had that done, taken down the whole Roman Empire as he's going to do this time around. See. Yahweh Shah is well equipped this time, all right? He's coming with those angels to defeat the powers that be, all right? This new world order is going to be defeated at the hands and the power and the might of Yahweh Shah with the holy host of angels with him. He's coming back like lion, we know, right? NLT says, don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? And what are the scriptures essentially? What we come to find out are the mysterious plans of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. Of what's to come in his plan for his son and his plan for the heirs, joint heirs, along with his son, the elect. Okay. 
all right so that's it on this lesson i'm gonna rock this out this video was that a fine till next time shalom